Dear shareholders, I would like to extend a very cordial welcome to all of you uh, to the annual general meeting of Fresenius. It's great that you are all here today. Let me start with an issue of the greatest importance to you. Your company is doing well. We can look back on a successful year and we are able to look forward to a very promising future, a future in which we are going to be investing for the benefit of our patients, for our company's long-lasting success, and therefore this will also be to your advantage as well. That is good news, important news, because of course I know that in 2018 you did not only hear good news from us. I also know very well how our share price developed. It wasn't good at all, not good at all. Many of you are surely very concerned about this and so am I. But what actually happened? That's what I would like to explain to you now. You know that we always provide very precise guidance and forecast. How will our, our sales develop, our earnings, how will our business segments be doing? And we provide concrete answers and not just simply general statements, but detailed answers in figures. You deserve to know where you stand with us. And normally we meet our targets and sometimes we even beat them. And that is what you have become used to uh, from us. Unfortunately, we weren't successful at this last year. We had to reduce our earnings targets twice within a very short period of time. The first time with respect to our guidance for 2018 and then with respect to our midterm targets. And this is something that you really are not used to from us. And this absolutely does not meet the standards we set for ourselves. And I say to you quite frankly that this really angered me quite a bit. It uh, had a very negative impact on our share price, as you can see on this chart, that two big drops on these two days is where we adjusted our guidance with regard to our earnings targets. So for us, this now means we have to win back confidence, win back your confidence. And I assure you, we are going to work very hard to do precisely that. After all, this year, our share price has continued to recover some of the lost ground, which shows that we are on the right track. Another topic that generated a lot of headlines in 2018 was our legal dispute with ACORN, no question. We would have liked to have avoided this whole situation. You will surely recall that Acorn is a generics maker based in the United States that we wish to acquire. Acorn's products would have made a, a meaningful addition to Fresenio's Cabe's portfolio. However, during the takeover process, we discovered grave misconduct at Acorn. Product data had been systematically manipulated. And this is an action that is totally incompatible with our values. And so we had no choice but to withdraw from our merger agreement. We knew that this would lead to a very complicated legal battle. But we also knew that we were in the right. And ultimately, the courts in the United States confirmed this, which shows that we had very carefully prepared the takeover. Those areas of the company that we weren't allowed to really check ourselves were, um, pro were covered by contractual assurances uh, during the due diligence process, which provided the basis for the judgment in our favor. And what this success also showed is that we are uncompromising when it comes to defending our rights for the sake of our company, but also for your sake, dear shareholders. Ladies and gentlemen, 2018 was not an easy for us, not at all. Nevertheless, it was still a very successful year. And that's what our figures show. Sales 
33.5 billion euros, an increase of 6%. Uh, earnings, almost 1.9 billion euros, an increase of 7%. We have continued to grow for the 15th consecutive year. And this also means that with your approval, the dividend will be raised again to 80 cents a strong increase of 7% that is equivalent to our increase in our earnings. And this is how we are making sure that you share in our success. And this will be the 26th straight year that Fresenius has paid a higher dividend. We have also increased the number of our employees. We now have more than 280,000 employees. Every day they go to work for our patients. They produce new medicines, develop new products, help babies come into the world and they care for very ill people. They are motivated, committed, and passionate about what they do. And that makes me proud. Our employees make me proud. They are Fresenios, and their work is, uh, is our success. And I think that deserves a big round of applause. Thank you very much. So 2018 was not only successful with regard to our figures, but we also uh, made progress with regard to our business. We expanded our activities in all areas. We achieved a significant milestones. And a cup, I would like to um, talk about a couple of milestones, uh, which are, represent others. Let's start with Fresenius Medical Care. We launched a new dialysis machine, the 4008A, developed especially for the needs of emerging countries. It is robust, easy to use, and capable of providing treatment that meets Fresenius Medical Care's high standards. Yet, it also significantly lowers treatment costs with the goal of making dialysis available to the greatest possible number of people suffering from kidney disease. Their situation in many emerging market countries remains dire. In Asia, for example, only one in three people with kidney disease have access to dialysis. This has created a huge treatment gap. And in the case of end-stage renal disease, as you know, dialysis is essential to saving lives. And we want to help these people. We have to help them, not least with the 4008A machine. It is being launched on the Indian market first, with other Asian countries to follow. At Fresenius Kabi, we have once again made heavy investments into our plants. And there's a long list of investments in Canada, China, the Dominican Republic, the Netherlands, the UK, the United States. And, in, and these are only some of the countries where we are expanding and upgrading our production facilities. Just take our plant close to Chicago, where we will be investing uh, approximately 350 million euros by 2026 alone. Why are we doing this? First of all, we are thus continuing to ensure our continued growth. The demand for our products is rising, and of course, we want to meet this demand. Secondly, this means we are able to live up to our responsibility to our patients. After all, we're not producing sneakers or chewing, game, uh, chewing gum. We're producing medicines. Medicines that are needed urgently by people around the world, that they need to live and to survive. We want to make sure that they can always receive these medicines. But, but that is anything but easy. Uh, again and again, there have been supply bottlenecks for the most important medicines, even in highly advanced nations like the United States, usually due to quality problems that prevent a supplier from being able to deliver these products. We, do are fully engaged in confronting these bottlenecks. How? First of all, due to our high production quality, this allows us to ensure that we are not going to have any stoppages in production, so that we ourselves do not cause a shortage of, in supply. This is what we've been doing in the past and what we shall continue doing in the future. Secondly, 
We can also compensate for product shortages by turning to our international production network. And quickly, too. When others have a shortage, we're able to jump in. And that is why we are investing so much into our production. By the way, for this commitment, the FDA awarded Fresenius Kabi a prize last year for having helped to mitigate a shortage. Let us now turn to Fresenius Helios, where we see a mixed picture. The international business continues to perform very well. In Spain, Chiron Salud is developing according to plan in sales, earnings, and the number of patients treated. Everywhere, everything is going up. In Cordoba, we have opened up a completely new hospital. Moreover, we are going to be active in another country, Colombia, where in October we agreed to acquire Clinica Medellin, which operates two hospitals in this city. And you will surely already recall that Chiron Salud had already acquired Peru's largest hospital in 2017, and now Colombia is being added. Latin America's hospital markets are growing, and of course, we want to grow along with them. What about turning to Germany? Unfortunately, things have not gone as smoothly in Germany. For many years, patient numbers in our Helios hospitals went in only one direction, up. But last year, they fell. Why? On the one hand, it took us longer than we had hoped to fill job vacancies, which led to a shortage in staff that prevented us from treating as many patients as originally planned. Another reason was the trend towards more outpatient treatment. But rest assured, this decline will remain an exception. We have already taken effective measures. Which measures? Well, I'll tell you about those in a moment. First, though, I would like to mention, and this is worth mentioning, that Helios, despite these challenges, remains Germany's leading hospital group. Helios leads in size and in quality. And this brings me to another milestone, which involves our inpatient rehabilitation business. In 2018, we reorganized this, transferring 38 rehab facilities in Germany from Helios to Vomit. This means that Helios can now focus even more strongly on acute care and on its continued internationalization. And Fresenius Vomit now has a strong presence in Germany. In addition to its already existing operations in Austria, Switzerland, the Czech Republic, the UK, and so on, Vaman has become one of the Europe's leading providers of post-acute care. As you can see, Fresenius is in very good shape, and we are still growing. But success just doesn't happen by itself, and it, does, it just doesn't stay with us by itself. We have to make this happen. And that is what we intend to do. 2019 will be a year of investments. We are not resting on our laurels. On the contrary, we are gearing up. To date, we have already made major investments in research development in production in our hospitals and clinics and in the continued development of our business. The we are going to significantly increase these already very large investments. Why? In order to ensure dynamic growth in the future and to prefer, prepare Fresenius even better for the future. And here are a few specific examples. At Fresenius Medical Care, we closed the acquisition of Next Stage in late February. Next Stage offers machines for home dialysis that is treatment carried out in the patient's own home and not as is customary at a dialysis clinic. This area of treatment is growing fast and we want to grow with it. Well, home dialysis is not suitable for every patient, but for some patients it offers significant benefits, particularly it offers more flexibility 
and therefore more quality of life. And that is why we want to offer home dialysis on a large scale. And that is why we are developing the essential infrastructure. For example, training centers, skilled and highly qualified employees, logistics, and of course, the machines themselves. A second example, Fresenius Kabi, where we will be making very broad investments. And that applies to all of our core businesses, generics, infusion solutions, and clinical nutrition. And this also applies to our new biosimilars business. In fact, we just launched our first biosimilar on the market two weeks ago. And at Helios in Germany, yes, we've recently encountered some headwinds, as I've already mentioned. One cause is the trend towards outpatient care, to which we are responding. How? By significantly expanding our outpatient offerings for which we have established a new Helios division. And we've also established a new division for new business models, such as video consultations with physicians, medical checkups, faster and more convenient appointment scheduling, and occupational medicine that can be offered to other companies as a service that we are willing to provide to them. Moreover, we are going to continue to digitize uh, our workflows in hospitals, and we are going to develop centers for specific pathologies and disease patterns. The goal, to bundle our knowledge, expertise, and experience for specialized areas in one hospitals. This will enable us to offer the best possible treatment, much better than that could be offered in a typical hospital, for the benefit of our patients. And last but not least, Helios wants to hire 1,000 new male and female nurses. Why? In order to provide optimum care to our patients and to ensure that we never have to turn away patients anywhere because we do not have enough people to look after them. In Spain, we are building a new hospital in Terron, which is just outside the Spanish capital of Madrid. In Madrid itself, we are developing uh, Spain's first new center for proton beam therapy, a highly advanced method for treating cancer that is extremely precise. And that is why it also has significantly reduced side effects. At Fresenius Mamed, we will be investing in particular in the expansion of our European rehabilitation business. But the other areas of Ahmed's business will also be expanded. These include the steriliz sterilization of medical instruments, for example, a very important and very sensitive issue for hospitals. Without sterile instruments, surgeons cannot operate. And in Germany, we are now one of the leaders in this field, and we intend to expand our position here. But the thing about investments is that they cost money. Additional investments cost additional money, of course, and that, of course, initially weighs on our earnings. And therefore, we do not expect them to increase in 2019, at least not significantly. We anticipate earnings at about the same high level as in 2018, at least that's our guidance, without accounting for currency fluctuations, of course. But this is intended to be a one-time standstill or lateral step. After 2019, we expect a return to dynamic growth and also to profits. In accordance with our forecasts for the years from 2020 to 2023, we expect growth of an average of 5 to 9% annually. However, 2019 will not only be a year of investments, it will be another year of growth. And that can already be seen in our sales, which is intended to climb from between 3 to 6% this year. And after that, somewhat faster. And here we are again able to provide a concrete target for 2020 to 2023. On average, a plus of 4 to 7% per year. What is important here is this guidance is based entirely on organic growth, i.e. growth f from our own strength. If we then add a few small and mid-sized acquisitions, then the expected growth rates will probably be about one percentage point higher than what we've just said.
So I've just mentioned small and medium-sized acquisitions, but you are probably wondering, well, what about larger acquisitions, the strategic acquisitions? Because, of course, we've had a few stri big strategic acquisitions in the past. I am convinced that there will be more large takeovers in the future. They will continue to drive our successful development in the future and they will continue to complement our organic growth. But when exactly? Well, I can't say yet. Probably not this year. More likely as of from 2020 on. But one thing is clear. We are ready. When the right opportunity presents itself, uh, we can move on it, and we will. From a position of strength, both in terms of finances and at the level of management, and we will continue to proceed as we have done in the past, cautiously, carefully, selectively, but also with the necessary boldness and an eye for taking advantage of opportunities. Another thing that is not going to change is our decentralized structure. It has proved its worth. Our four business segments have also stood the test. Each business segment is a strong and stable pillar of our success, and this is not going to change. However, we are going to work to reinforce and better connect the various business segments to make them an even stronger basis for future growth. But what do I mean by this? Within our country, uh, within our company, we want to collaborate much more closely. As I've already mentioned, we have a decentralized organizational structure, and that is going to change. We continue to emphasize having independent and dynamic units, which has brought us many advantages. The ability to move faster, for example, and we want to continue benefiting from these benefits. But we know that a decentralized approach costs us synergies, and it leaves potential untapped. Potential that we could use without losing any speed. I'm firmly convinced of this, which is why we on the management board are pushing very vigorously to ensure that our business segments are better connected. We've already launched some very initial promising steps in this direction. And let me give you a few examples of these steps. Fresenius Kabi is a leading provider of infusion solutions in Europe, Asia, and Latin America. But we are not present in this market in the United States. And this is to, going to change with the support of Fresenius Medical Care because FMC already has large production and logistics capacities in the country that we intend to use to the benefit of both companies. In this way, we can keep our production and logistics costs low and simultaneously provide a fast and reliable s supply of high quality products. S my second example is the acquisition of Clinica Medellin in Colombia by Chiron Salute. Fresenius Medical Care and Fresenius Cabi have operated successfully in Colombia for many years now, which was a great advantage during the negotiations, and it will be an even bigger advantage during the integration of this company. FMC already operates a dialysis center in Clinica Medellin, and Fresenius Cabi is currently working with the company to establish a blood bank. We want to continue to expand this collaboration and extend it to include Fresenius Vomit. Third example, Germany and Spain. In these two countries, Helios and Vomit are already working very closely together. Among other things, they are working together with regard to the procurement of medical technology, building new hospitals, but also with regard to non-medical services, which include, for example, the technical operation of these hospitals, or the aforementioned sterilization of surgical and other instruments. Dear shareholders, I am now coming to the end of my speech, and I hope that I have managed to give you a good overview of where we stand and of where we're going. I'll summarize once again. 2018 was not an easy year for us, and yet it was nevertheless a successful year. 
Fresenius is in very good shape, and all the indications point to continued and profitable growth. What we're doing has become more important than ever. The healthcare market is growing. People are living longer, and around the world, the demand for high quality medical care is rising. The needs and expectations are also changing. It's no longer just about preserving lives, but increasingly about raising the quality of life for people well into their old age. And it is also about keeping quality health care affordable in the long run. These are huge challenges, but challenges for which we are superbly positioned, challenges that we are eager to tackle, challenges that we will tackle and meet, because that is what we are really all about as a company and what we have been doing for more than 100 years now. This is our commitment, ever better medicine for ever more people. That's what we want, and that's what we are able to offer consistently, again and again. That is what Fresenius stands for, and that is also the key to our success. When our patients do well, Fresenius does well. And then you, our shareholders, will also benefit. Thank you very much.